Howdy folks, Singin' Toad here, and uh, today what I'd like to talk about is this uh, uh, Sen Ren Mu uh, 7010 uh, knife um, that I recently uh, got um, as, a, uh, as a prize. Well, actually, not as a prize, it accompanied a prize uh, that I received uh, from Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge YouTube channel. Uh, a few months ago, he did a, uh, a giveaway challenge, and, uh, and I won. Uh, the knife I actually won... Uh, was this knife here, this uh, uh, Cave Tactical uh, Tanto knife, but he threw this in along with it, um, unmentioned of course, uh, in the giveaway, and uh, I was uh, quite uh, happy to receive this knife. This is a new brand for me, uh, so is the Cave Tactical, <laughs> but uh, but Sen Ren Mu I've never heard of before until actually I, I had uh, started watching uh, Jake's videos, um, and uh, they seem to make quite a lot of nifty stuff. So, um, this isn't so much a review of this knife, it's just more of me kind of talking about it and my experiences with it so far. So, um, it did come with a pocket clip, and, uh, and, and I put a pocket clip on, uh, a Jake sent these uh, with the pocket clips uh, off. Both, both knives were flat packed, and the pocket clips were off, stored in a little baggie with their screws. I put them on, and uh, the, the clips on, and uh, on this knife here, I actually like the pocket clip off. This thing is so thin and and small that uh, I decided to take the pocket clip off and uh, I made a little uh, lanyard here out of uh, a reflective um, uh, paracord. It's got this like reflective material in it um, and I just uh, made this little like snake knot type uh, uh, lanyard and I deliberately made this hole large enough that when I open uh, the knife up I can stick my pinky finger through there like so and it just gives me you know a full kind of four fingered uh, grip on the knife when I'm holding it like this. Um, if I choke up on the knife and kind of ride my finger forward I can still get all four of my fingers on this grip. But uh, yeah I really like this thing and I've been carrying it in the pocket a little bit and uh, and I'm just gonna kind of you know talk about what I like about it and maybe what I don't like about it. <laughs> um, and uh, anyway, so before we get uh, too far along here, um, I'm just going to quickly mention that I'm not sure exactly what the blade steel is. Um, I believe Jake did mention that it was uh, uh, 8 uh, CR uh, 14 MOV. Um, however, some of the websites I went to uh, show this as being in 12 uh, C27. Um, and now there's some markings here. That's you know that's the actual model number, the seven uh, seventy ten uh, LUC SA. But there's this little triangle with the number twelve, and I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's a date code. So maybe this knife was made in 2012, or maybe that indicates the blade steel material as being the 12 CR uh, or 12 C27. Uh, excuse me, rather than the 8 CR. I don't know. So there's some conflicting information on the various websites I've went to uh, as to what the material is uh, for the blade steel. Um, and uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, all that aside, uh, let's uh, do some quick size comparisons just for anyone who's not familiar with this particular knife and, and its size. Um, so the first thing I'm going to compare it against is my Spyderco uh, Dragonfly. So. I'm going to put that right there. Excuse me. So that's the uh, the Dragonfly 2. That looks really weird there. Let me put that. That looks weird there too. <laughs> oh well, you get the idea. So that's the Dragonfly. I'm just going to put them back up there for now. Uh, and in no particular order, the CRKT Pilar. And... You know, handle-wise, it's about the same size. Blade, obviously, different. And we'll just, uh, actually, we'll leave the Pilar there. We'll get rid of the Dragonfly. And bring out the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. And uh, sorry if the, the blade's mucked up. Uh, you know, I use my knives. Uh, this is one of my uh, knives that's in my regular EDC rotation. So it does get used and loved, and uh, and I really like this Benchmade uh, Mini Grip. This is in the 154CM, 
but uh, as you can see it's very similar in size all right and we'll just go ahead and get rid of that real quick and just put in some larger knives for comparison so we have the Gerber flat iron in D2 with the uh, blue denim micarta and another larger knife let's just move that lanyard over and we have the cold steel recon one just for some size comparisons you know so anyone who's not familiar with this knife uh, they will get some ideas of the size okay and by no means am I comparing this knife to any of the other knives I just put down <laughs> okay that's just strictly for size comparisons uh, and instead of using my typical Spyderco Delica I decided to bring out a couple other knives um, and so what I want to talk about with this knife is as I already mentioned I really like the shape of it and it feels really good in the hand um, even though it's very smooth and you know as Nick Chavez would say <laughs> you know if you work all day in the Vaseline factory this is probably not a good knife for you but with that lanyard on there you know even if I had uh, slippery hands you know I could get my finger through that lanyard like so and, and facilitate some good grip on the knife even in, in a low uh, traction uh, situation um, you know it is a complete like uh, you know uh, open design so uh, and being a frame lock it's a very simple design um, you know there's very little that can go wrong with this knife even if it got really gummed up uh, it'd be very easy to clean that out you know um, it has a little bit of jimping right here on the back which is which is nice um, it is very very thin behind the the edge here I mean this the 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 actual cutting edge is very very uh, tiny you know by by comparison just to bring back in the CRKT Pilar like look how much edge there is on that you know versus that and then of course you know the major difference is, is the thickness you know the the CRKT Pilar Pilar however you pronounce that I don't know um, I mean this thing is like carrying a pocket a mini pocket cleaver in your in your in your pocket um, you know, it's, this is a, is a tank of a knife, uh, by comparison, you know, this is very, very thin, which I like, you know, for a small lightweight pocket knife, that's what I want. I want a thin slicey blade, hollow ground, which I really like. Um, you know, it, it just, it just works. And another little feature I like about this thing is it has a 90 degree spine and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, how well this will show up but that is scraping my fingernail so because I go into the woods and the bush quite often uh, actually I'll just leave it like that for now um, if I was carrying this in my pocket and this was the only knife I had on me and I had to use this to strike a ferro rod to light a fire um, I can use the back of this blade because it is uh, sharp enough to do so without having to use the, the edge of the blade so that is something I really really like or of course I could use this to scrape uh, uh, wood or to scrape uh, birch bark to make tinder uh, to start a friction fire or something like that. So I like the fact that it's got a 90 degree uh, spine which goes all the way out to the tip. So I could even do it down here on the tip if I wanted to uh, and not have to sacrifice uh, the, the edge and, and mar that up. Um, it does have somewhat of a stiff action I'm sure because it's still fairly new that'll get better but what I have found for myself personally if I kind of wrap my finger around this way and just kind of push up with my thumb it does seem to pop open nice and easy um, what else can I tell you about this guy oh yeah the blade centered perfectly centered and I've not messed with this thing this is pretty much the way it came the only thing I've done is I've added a lanyard I haven't sharpened it or anything like that um, I've just carried it kind of as is and uh, and I tell you what I really like it um, I don't feel in the pocket at all. I don't know what it weighs, but it's, it's super light. Again, I like that graphic that's on there. Uh, that, whatever that is, a cougar or a puma or something. I don't know. Um, you know, torque screws, you know, to, to hardware. To take this thing apart would be very easy. I'm not sure how the thumb studs come off. There is like some sort of a little groove in there. And thusly on the other side, uh, the camera's not really showing it, but but it does, it is there. So maybe some sort of a special tool can get, grab that and pop that off if I, if I had to. Um, 
the markings on this side, by the way, is this their logo. And I don't know if the can. Oh, there you go. So it's some some kanji of some sort, and then then the R. But uh, yeah, I like this thing. I really, really, really like this knife. You know, and um, I forget which website I was on. Was it AliExpress? I don't remember. One of them is like twenty two U S dollars for this knife. Um, that's like cheap and. <laughs> You, what's kind of neat is, is is the shape of this knife, and I think that's why it feels so good in the hand. And that is, it has a, and dare I say this, it 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 has a Chris Reeves Sabenza mini Sabenza uh, sort of shape. And by no means am I comparing this to a Sabenza. I want to make that very clear here. <laughs> Please don't hate on me in the comments for that. I am not saying that this is in any way, shape, or form the same as a Sabenza. Um, <laughs> that's like comparing a Ford Fiesta to a Ferrari. Okay, we're not even in the same field uh, uh, galaxy here, um, but it, just the shape, and, uh, and and I think just that shape, just it feels good in the hand. You know, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about this thing. I just I really like it. It's light. It's easy to use. Um, I can even. I mean, I'm not great left-handed, but I can even you know, open and close this knife fairly easily left-handed. And that's something that's a little more challenging with a, uh, with, with a, a liner or a frame lock, especially if you're, if you're right-handed. But if something, the, the situation was that I had to use my left hand to open the knife and, of course, uh, close the knife. Ugh. Again, it's still a little bit stiff because it's still fairly, fairly new. Um, new to me, at least. Uh, I don't know how long Jake uh, had this knife and, and, and if he used it at all. But, and I'm not sure what type of washers it has in there. I want to say they're probably Teflon. I would doubt this thing's got brass washers at the price point that it's in. But I tell you what, for the price point, I mean, whether it's 8CR or it's 12C27, you know what, for 22 US dollars, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. And I would highly recommend, if you're looking for a small, easy-to-carry pocket knife, uh, whether you want to carry it with a pocket clip or with, with a lanyard, how, how I have it set up uh, in today's configuration, um, in the way I've been carrying it and, and liking it, um, you can't go wrong with this. Um, and tell you the truth, if, if they were to make a premium version of this knife and maybe make the blade steel a little bit better, like say in D2 or VG10 or 154CM, um, you know, I, I would I would buy one in a heartbeat. You know, I would I would happily snap one up if uh, if this was made in in a in a, in a better blade steel. Um, but even as is, this is still a great knife. And you know, this would even make a good little beater knife. You know, and uh, and a good gift knife. You know, if you're looking for a maybe a stocking stuffer to get someone, you know, who's looking for a pocket knife and they're not really a big knife person, you can buy these fairly cheap and. Uh, and, and they come in a whole whack of different configurations, too. There's different logos on the side, different handle scale materials, G10 and whatnot, um, different blade steels, <laughs> apparently. Uh, I haven't seen any that are better than 12C or 8CR. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, at any rate, um, yeah, I really like this thing, and uh, that's all I have to say about that, folks. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Singing Toad signing out.